Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken and I'm here today to talk about a very exciting January release from Paramount and that is Juice on 4K starring Tupac Shakur Omar Epps and directed by Ernest R. Dickerson. So this is a film from 1992. I've never seen this movie, so this was a first time watch for me. And I'm very excited uh, to get into this one. You know, having recently watched Menace to Society, Boys in the Hood, this life in the hood genre, I'm really starting to gravitate towards. I don't know, there's something, something about it that just feels so real and raw and I just really connecting to it just on an emotional level. And I've really been enjoying watching these movies. So this was another one that I was excited to get into for the first time. But before we talk about it, before I break it down for you guys, we're gonna talk about the movie itself. Then we're gonna talk about the audio and the visual quality. We're gonna talk about the special features. We're gonna talk about the packaging, all that good stuff. And let you guys know if this is worth uh, picking up. I wanna ask that if you are not yet a subscriber of the Middle Level Media channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button for more great content. I do all kinds of stuff on this channel, mostly centered around the world of physical media. I do new 4K and Blu-ray reviews like this. I do the physical media report every single Monday where I update you on all the latest happenings in the world of physical media. I do Blu-ray hunting videos, collection videos, live streams, all kinds of content every single day. So definitely hit that subscribe button. Also like this video, guys. Don't go any further in the video without hitting that like button. I would definitely appreciate that. And comment down below, guys, um, your thoughts on the movie Juice. So one of your favorite movies from the 90s. Also, let me know if you picked up this release. What do you think of it? Did you get the Steelbook? That Steelbook was gorgeous, but I really like this slipcover too. Let me know all that in the comment section below. And also turn on those bell notifications for future videos. So like I said, this is a movie from 1992. So I'm pretty sure the same year that Deep Cover came out. Um, and the early 90s was a very rich time period for these African-American films filmmakers just kind of rising up and giving their perspective on um, not just like the gangster dramas, but also just like the noir, the crime thriller that Scorsese really popularized in the 70s and 80s, Francis Ford Coppola as well, and just kind of giving their perspective and their take on it. Um, and Juice is another really good film. Would I put it up there with Menace to Society, Boys in the Hood? No, I would not, but I really did enjoy this film. It's a little bit more uh, light-hearted, I would say, at least in the first 30 minutes. Like, it's really this, the story of these young boys just kind of, uh, yeah, they're doing bad things. They're kind of, they're not really terrorizing the town, but they're, you know, they're stealing stuff. They're, they're hoodlums. They're going around. They're doing bad things. They're sleeping in too late. They're aggravating their parents. It's a little bit, it feels kind of like a, a coming-of-age story, I guess. Just kind of a, a friendly hangout movie for the first 30 minutes. And then, uh, something happens with Tupac character of Bishop. Um, about 30 minutes in, he gets confronted by this kind of rival Hispanic gang um, in the streets. And they basically tell him, it's like, you don't have the juice. Like you ain't got that little something extra uh, that makes you feel dangerous. Like you don't have that edge. And that gets under Tupac's skin or, or Bishop's. I'm going to call him Tupac probably the entire review. That gets under his skin. It prompts a certain series of events to occur. One in particular that really kind of uh, pushes things over the edge. Again, I'm not going to spoil anything for those who haven't seen it, but there is one particular moment where it kind of, something happens with his character. It kind of changes the course of the film and his character uh, for the rest of the movie. And then after that, it really goes into some dark places, like some really dark places and places that I honestly did not expect it to go. Some of the things, some of the acts of a violence that he commits in this movie was completely unexpected. And, and to be honest, that's where some of my problems really come with this movie because this is only 90 minutes. I felt like the turn, and I guess I can put this down. I felt like the turn of uh, Bishop as a character just came a, a little bit too quickly. Uh, the way he, you know, committed the act of violence and then just went like he doubled down on it like immediately. Uh, I wish I would have saw a little bit more. To, I wish there was just a little bit more time uh, to 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 let that violent streak develop. Um, I think it would have made a lot more sense just some of the stuff that he does after that if, if you would have got more time to really develop 
uh, this character and this character arc for him. So I don't know what the the studios did. There was a, a portion in the in special features that I watched with Ernest R. Dickerson talks about how the studio was trying to interfere on some things and they changed the ending um, and things like that. So it just, it just kind of feels like a movie that rushes and goes a little bit too quickly, was maybe a little bit too edited. And I would have liked to see, I don't know if there's like a director's cut out there that's maybe adds 15 minutes, but I feel like there's something there as far as like just the way that Tupac's character Bishop just develops. And uh, I, I feel like if maybe given a little bit more time, it just would have felt, it would have been more impactful uh, with some of the things that he does later on in the movie. But it's a really cool movie. It's really well shot. It's got that got that really cool just kind of 90s aesthetic, that urban setting. You know, you got the nightclubs, you got all the neon colors and stuff. It just feels very early 90s. It's got a really great soundtrack, a really great feel and vibe to it throughout. And yeah, it just really, it starts off pretty, uh, you know, pretty light, pretty light, you know, friendly, um, and then kind of draws you into that. And then it just kind of flips on you out of nowhere and just gets really dark. Um, and, and really kind of depressing by the time we get to the end of the film. You got Omar Epps, who's kind of like uh, Tupac's best friend in the movie, and they have kind of a showdown at the end uh, because he's not liking what's going on with Tupac and, and the, the path that he's going down. And then there is this moment at the end that, you know, you feel like is supposed to be really emotional, but to be honest, wasn't really impactful for me. And I think that's because... Um, you know, Bishop's character, that the arc of that character didn't feel fully earned uh, by the time that we got to that moment. But it's certainly um, a really good movie. It's just not as powerful and it didn't resonate with me as much as like a movie like Menace to Society. When I was done watching that movie, uh, I was floored. My jaw was on the floor like that movie affected me. That movie, that's the type of movie that afterwards I'm sitting for 10 minutes just thinking about everything that I just saw on screen. And this is a really good movie. I really like it, but it didn't have that that same uh, that same effect, that same level of impact on me when I was finished watching it. So at the end of the day, guys, it's a good movie. I would give it probably a 3.5 to 4 out of a 5. I'm not exactly sure. I'll, I'll put it on Letterbox and put it up by the time, but it's somewhere in that range for me. Honestly, probably like a 3.75 since I can't really decide. So really good movie. Really enjoyed the movie. Some good performances. Tupac can really act. Like he was really good in this movie. Everybody uh, was good in this movie. Omar Epps, like, um, you also get Samuel Jackson in this movie, which, like, is he in every movie? I swear to God, every time I put on a movie, uh, Samuel Jackson pops on. I'm pretty sure he's in every movie that's ever uh, been made. So, yeah, it, it's got a great cast in it. Uh, Queen Latifah's in it for, for a small portion. So, really good kind of early 90s cast that you would see in, like, different TV shows and stuff during that era. Now, let's get into the technical specs of the movie. So, visually, guys, I thought that this was a really strong transfer for Paramount. It's not the best that I've ever seen um, out of this studio, but I thought it was a really strong transfer. It's a native 4K. It's got HDR. It's got Adobe Vision. Uh, so all that stuff, you know, it's got that uh, that urban setting. So when you go out into the streets and stuff and they're all walking, you got the you got the spray paint on the walls and just the way that the walls are painted and stuff. It's got the it's got the pinks, it's got the blues and stuff like that and some of the nightclubs. Some of those sequences, they all looked really good. The facial detail looks awesome. So this movie really pops with that HDR. Looks great. Um, I don't have the Blu-ray to compare it to because with this release, you only get uh, the 4K. You do not get the Blu-ray, but there is an additional, there was a Blu-ray release alongside this, a 30th anniversary edition. And then there was one that was released uh, five years ago for the 25th anniversary edition. And they all had the same cover um, as this one does. So transfer wise, guys, it looked great. Phenomenal. Not the best that I've seen from Paramount. It wasn't up there with Adam's family, but it's definitely no slouch in that department. Looks absolutely fantastic. So getting into the audio, this is where it might get a little bit disappointing for everybody. There is no Dolby Atmos and it still maintains the same DTS HD 5.1 audio from the Blu-ray five years ago. So they didn't do anything with the audio in terms of upgrading here. So like I said, I, I feel like they could have done a lot with this movie. Like there's some gun play some gunfighting sequences it probably would have sounded really good it's got a great soundtrack with the dj uh and the turntables and the nightclub sequences so i feel like they really could have done something special with the audio here and really given um some of those audio junkies with adobe atmos setups something to chew on with this release but they they chose not to do it not upgrade so um, anyway, yeah, a little bit disappointing for the audio. I just want to point that out. As far as the special features, I watched all the special features on here. There's three main ones, and then there's an audio commentary with the director that I didn't get into, but I really would 
uh, like to at some point. So some really good commentaries. Like I said, there's a really um, good uh, interview with the director, Ernest R. Dickerson, where he talks about how they made them change the ending of the movie. Uh, because of the uh, test screenings and stuff that happens and like involving Tupac's character and him screaming and giving a half-hearted scream. It's a good interview with, with Ernest R. Dickerson. He's pretty candid uh, about the process of filming this movie and just his disappointment with the studio and how they made him change the ending. So that's a really interesting one. Then they got an old like... Uh, cast interview of all the main leads. You got Tupac and stuff from 1992 on set. So that's a really fun uh, little interview with the four of them. You can tell they had some really good chemistry together with this movie. So some really good special features here, but uh, there's nothing new. These were all present on the 25th anniversary uh, of the Juice release, and they're also on the 30th anniversary Blu-ray release as well. So nothing new. These are all present before um, they did them for the 25th anniversary. So, uh, but if you don't have any of those releases, they will be new to you. So getting into the packaging guys, this is really solid packaging. I really love, uh, this slipcover. I like the steel book too, but I really love the slipcovers. I love the reds, uh, behind Tupac right there in the hood and just how they're black and white. And then you got this gold juice right here. It's metallic. It shines. Um, it just looks really good and crisp. And I got, I ordered this from Amazon and this is like maybe the first time I've gotten something in the mail from Amazon where the slipcover had like no damage on it. Like this slipcover is pristine. Like it looks great. Um, no disc card on the disc or anything, but it does come with the digital code, but no Blu-ray disc. So there you go, guys. That is my thoughts on Juice on 4K. I hope you enjoyed this review. Like I said, leave your thoughts on this release, on this movie in that comment section below. Did you buy the Steelbook or the slipcover? Let me know in that comment section below. Also, be sure to like this video, guys. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more reviews and collection updates and physical media content. And then be sure to turn on those bell notifications so you can be updated every single time a new mid-level media video drops. And I'll see you next time.